In this House of Logic video, we're going to have a look at Terraform and Open Tofu and what you can do with those for cloning uh, VMs or rather VM templates. Um, now, full disclosure, this has been a real battle. This was not as trivial as I hoped it would be. So um, just to uh, to go over a few of the things. Um, first of all, to explain how my environment is set up, I have a virtual machine here that I'm using basically as my Terraform and Open Tofu um, infrastructure as code uh, test bed machine. I like to uh, operate this way because that way it, it kind of keeps the host environment a little bit cleaner. Even though you, you could info, uh, install Terraform directly onto the Proxmox host, personally it's not something I would do. Um, so I've I've got a, uh, a machine here which I've already um, SSH'd onto and I've got some Terraform folders and I'll get to those in a moment. Um, so what I've found um, is um, I had a, had a bit of a play around. Uh, first of all I've, I've got Terraform installed. I've got Open Tofu installed. You can find the installation information about those. I'm not going to go through that. Um, what I decided to do was to try and use an AI to generate a template. Now this looks all very, very simple. Um, it telling me all the details with uh, with the provider and everything that would, I would need for Proxmox. And I, I basically gave this a try, and um, and what I actually found was um, there appears to be a bug in the Telmate um, Proxmox uh, provider, so in the 2.9.14, um, which just really was not wanting to play ball at all. So I, I had to go off and have a look for, um, for something else instead. Um, and what I found as a replacement for it um, was um, there is a, almost a drop-in replacement by uh, the game Profi on um, on GitHub, um, who has a 2.9.15 um, version basically, which is um, is ahead of um, of the main um, uh, Terraform uh, provider, um, and and that seemed to actually um, give me a, a bit of a better chance to work. Um, Another thing um, that I did have a play around with as part of this was to look at cloud init based um, deployments, and there's some really interesting articles here by uh, by Austin's Nerdy Things uh, dot com, um, where he writes about using um, creating a, a, a Ubuntu um, image which you can then use. And there's a video and everything. It's just it's it's uh, from about three years ago. Um, so this some of this worked, but um, but I fell at the final furlong um, when attempting to get the VM to stand up and uh, connect to it over SSH. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure what I was doing wrong, um, but the SSH authentication into my target machine wasn't working. And I don't know if it's something subtle to do with the changes in some of the ciphers because it was using a um, uh, an ED25519 certificate rather than an RSA. I don't know what the support is like for that in terms of Terraform. So it was it was really frustrating. So it's been a very long day looking at some of this stuff. Um, not to just say that this isn't valid, but um, yeah, I'll, 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 it's easiest if I simply demonstrate what has worked for me. Um, so I have an Ubuntu um, 2404 machine on which I'm I'm using as my um, as my test bed for running Terraform. And I also have this Ubuntu 2404 um, template, which has just been set up with a straightforward username and password. Now, in order to get this to work, what you would normally do is you'd go and create your Terraform um, uh, files. So if we go into the Terraform test folder, um, we will go into nano and we will look at uh, the main.tf file. Um, and within there, so we've I've actually set this back so it should actually go wrong, and you can see the fault. Um, so when it runs, it's going to try and run with the Telmate um, uh, provider on the version that doesn't work properly. I've got the details for my uh, my Proxmox host here, which I'm just using an IP address. You may be using a full DNS name. Um, we're going to use insecure um, uh, connections on the certificates because that's just how it's set up. Um, and I have my uh, my token ID. I've I've done some of this stuff on the API already, um, to how to set this up and how to to name it and so on, and uh, and that's just used here for for actually doing the connection. We're then going to go through and the the very simple um, Terraform resource that we create is going to be cloned from that VM, so from VM eight thousand over here, and um, we're going to use uh, we we have to specify the cores and the sockets and the memory because unlike things in VMware that will not propagate across from the template you do have to set that every time uh, and in order to get the actual activity to succeed we have to activate the um, chemo guest agent just to make sure that it gets a report of the status that yes this is up and running 
so it's a it's a really really simple and simple as I was planning initially on demonstrating um, a terraform um, a config file there so what we'll do is we will come out of that by doing control X and um, so the commands are entirely identical between terraform and open tofu so first of all we're going to do terraform in it and that's already telling me that uh, that it doesn't like it so we'll quickly go in um, oh, I forgot to put that in quotes, so let's go back in there. Yep, and we'll just sort that out quickly. So Terraform init. So that's downloading the uh, correct information for the provider. Now we can do a Terraform plan, which again will tell me nothing is wrong. And that's all saying, that's great. So now we can do a Terraform apply, and um, this will or should fail, or certainly has failed every other time I've tried it today. Um, so our little um, our config file is actually going to do a cloning of two uh, virtual machines, and we'll take a couple of minutes to get through to that point. But I'm expecting it to blow up spectacularly at that point. At which point we'll flip it over to the other provider, and um, and hopefully it should then go through. Um, when that's done, we will then hop over to the uh, open tofu and repeat the activity. So we're just going to get let that run for a, a minute or so, and I'll um, I'll skip ahead in the video to where that's completed. Okay, there we go. So you can actually see that the Terraform um, provider has reported that it's uh, that it's crashed. So yeah, the, unfortunately, the Telmate provider is um, something of the default in a number of Proxmox uh, environments. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. We're going to find the virtual machines that have been created, and we're going to remove them. And then we're going to reinitialize Terraform with a replacement provider. Oops, I keep right-clicking. I'm, I'm in very bad VMware habits of trying to remove virtual machines. It would be a nice feature, a nice context feature there for, for Proxmox, but... Yeah, maybe another day. Uh, right, let's go back in here then, and we will go back into uh, main, and then we're going to comment out or remove the comment from that and comment out that line, and then we can exit, and we can go back to Terraform init, which has not worked because we need to clean up the rest of the information in this directory. So we need to get rid of... We need to r, uh, rm dash rf dot terraform and rm dot terraform dot lock dot hcl and terraform dot tf state. Now that hopefully should do the job, or certainly I think that's what I did earlier on. So let's try again. Ah, I know what's gone gone wrong here. I've not updated the version because there is no 2.9.14. Um, 2 it's 2.9.15. I only know that because I read the documentation earlier. Okay, let's try that again. But it's better to wipe out that uh, additional information if you're switching providers anyway, I would think. Okay, so that initialization's worked. We can now do a plan just for the sake of it. Whoops. And finally, apply. Okay, so that's now cloning again, and hopefully that should now run through to completion. You can see that machines have already started cloning over there, which is as far as it got with the, uh, the other provider. But let's let that go through, and hopefully that should complete. Okay, so you can see there that um, the... Um, the actual cloning has completed successfully. Now, there does seem to be one drawback in what we've got in here so far, which is that it, I don't think, is being successfully distinguishing between these VMs in terms of the IPs. So that's got 5.35 as an IP address. Let's see what this one's got. Yeah, that's got 5.35 as well. So it's it's not actually managing to uh, differentiate or something in the DHCP um, is going wrong. Perhaps perhaps a host name is um, is throwing up a, um, a repeat um, issue of the um, certificates, which uh, sorry, not certificates, addresses, which um, which I find slightly surprising because I'd have thought that the MAC addresses should be different um, between the machines. 
But nevertheless, that's something I'm going to come back to, and um, and hopefully there will be a. Uh, I'll, I'll update this video before I um, before I actually post it. Um, so I will come back to that one hopefully a bit later on in this video. Um, now, if I go back to the um, uh, to the Terraform file here, so just to quickly review one small part of it, which is that of um, the host names. So. Um, what we've got here is actually, and thanks to uh, Austin's nerdy things for this uh, for this bit of guidance. Um, so we've got a count of the number of machines we're going to create, and then we're you, we're generating the actual machine name from the count and the index, and we're adding on one for each um, machine there. So so we're ending up with distinct machine names, which is is something of a more useful feature that you can get out of Terraform, even if you are doing this aspect of cloning. Cloning. So. Um, there will hopefully be some extra options added in here by the time I've published this script, um, which will hopefully sort out the um, the IP address problems. But anyway, just to get onto Open Tofu now. Um, so again, very very similar. So if we go cd dot dot slash, I think it's Tofu test. There we go, um, and uh, exactly the same commands here. So it is Tofu rather than Terraform, and then in it, surprise surprise, this should go off and pull down the providers and plugins necessary so in fact the as you can see the game profi um provider is absolutely identical um so we with that we can now go and do tofu plan which has not reported any major errors and uh, if we, in fact we we'll scroll up just to prove the point nothing with any nasty question marks or marks next to it and then we can do tofu apply and confirm with a yes and because i've entered slightly different host names as you can see it should start popping up there we go v uh, vm ids 115 and 116 and then they should pop up with vm clone tofu as part of their machine names so we'll let that run through and uh, then that's going to be about it for this part of the video Okay, there we go. Uh, Open Tofu has also succeeded in creating uh, the VMs. So actually one thing I haven't shown is that you can log into them. So let's just choose this one. They're all basically identical anyway. And we can, there we go, we have a console window and we can log in and it's just a simple user as the main user. And there we go. So we have, um, the IP address uh, as listed and um, and that has successfully cloned from the template so uh, my next job is to figure out if I can get those to be customized and hopefully if I can make uh, terraform uh, slash open tofu do the job okay hopefully I will be picking this up in part two of the video Okay, so it's a couple of days later, I've had a chance to find out what's going on um, with this problem with duplicate IP addresses. And uh, after a bit of Googling and a bit of experimentation, um, I found out what's happening, I believe it's, or certainly what I believe is what's happening, is that my DHCP server is using the machine ID from each machine um, rather than the MAC address, as I expected. So on new machines, uh, sorry, new VMs, um, it, what's happening is it's ending up with the same um, virtual machine ID on each one. So when the DHCP is issuing the address, it seems to sees the same machine and says, oh, right, you've already got an address. Here you go again. Um, now, what you can do to work around that. So what I've done is to um, to go into the template or rather clone the template to a VM and then turned it back into a um, to, um, to the actual uh, template ID is um, you need to go in and you need to start the uh, template up and you're going to go and edit it. So we'll wait for that to come back online. Okay, so we'll log in now as user And what we'll then do is we'll do sudo s in order to become super user without having to keep repeating the commands. And we would do if I could type. There we go. 
and these are the commands which I'm just going to drag onto the other monitor. I'll put these in the uh, in the comments as well. So you're gonna um, you're basically gonna wipe out and um, uh, change the settings around the uh, machine ID. So first of all, we're gonna do echo dash n forward slash etc slash machine hyphen ID. And in fact, these are probably already cached in here. So let's just go back through them. Then I won't have to type them all in. Um, we're going to remove the machine ID from the var lib dbus uh, directory. And then last of all, we are going to apply that command there, which I think is a link command. Um, and what we can then uh, do is we can simply power off like so. And then we are going to, um, in fact, turn that into a full-on um, template. Although having said that, we don't actually need to do that. It does work from cloning from a normal um, a VM as well this way. So we'll just turn that into a template for sake of argument. And then we can go over to Terraform. Now, slight difference I've applied in Terraform. I've set the OS type to be Linux. Um, and the other thing that I've done is because it was generating a warning, which was doing absolutely nothing, um, I have gone and removed the um, IO thread um, option from the um, uh, from the SCSI uh, disk. I think it was on the SCSI disk. Yes, so I've, I've unticked that box basically because that was generating some warnings when clo um, the actual cloning was running. So so what should now happen is we can um, we can do, go and do a Terraform plan and it should tell us what it's going to do and it should actually now go and create two virtual machines for us. So we'll just come out of that and we'll do um, Terraform plan. You can see from the, uh, from the actual command window there that this has run when I've tested this earlier. And so it's saying, yeah, it's plan two to add. And uh, we can now do Terraform apply and we'll let that run through. And we should see two VMs get cloned and they should come up successfully and have distinct addresses. So we'll, uh, we'll let that run and cut ahead to when that's finished. Okay, um, so it has uh, finished with the cloning and we can now go and have a look at the machine. So on the summary page, um, what we can see here is we have an IP address of 192.168.5.44 and hopefully, there we go, on the summary page for the other VM we have um, 5.45. And in fact, if we go in, let's let's actually just complete with, um, with doing this. So... We're on um, the Terraform 2 clone, so we can log in. So it should be the same username and password as these have not changed. And we can do um, sudo uh, cat forward slash etc forward slash machine ID. And then it's going to ask us for the password again. So it begins with 8C and ends in FFFF. And if we go in on the other one, then finally we should be able to do exactly the same here. Pseudo forward slash uh, pseudo cat, sorry, forward slash etc. forward slash machine hyphen ID password again. And there we go, completely different machine IDs. So that has worked successfully. Um, and so that's what you need to do in order to clone um, from uh, templates in um, Terraform. I think I'll be revisiting this um, in some other shape or form in order to have a look at cloud in it as well. Um, and we'll see where we get to with that. Uh, thanks very much for uh, for watching and enduring my troubleshooting efforts. Um, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, please like and subscribe um, if that's your cup of tea. Um, otherwise, we will catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.